this. <laughs> the fucking frame, it slid. Uh, I'm not gonna clean it up. Job. You think they'll, they'll notice? Damn, that's just rowdy. Does it look rowdy? Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna have a broken frame in the background? Yeah. What's going on, Fader Culture? I'm Major Barone. <laughs> and first of all, Happy New Year's, guys. We finally made it to 2022. I hope 2021 was a good year for y'all. Hope y'all spent it with y'all's loved ones and had a good time. And more importantly, I hope y'all writing down some goals, guys. So matter of fact, let me know down in the comments some of y'all's goals as we do read every single comment and I am gonna hold some of y'all accountable, guys. But for the reason y'all here today, we are back with another tutorial. We're gonna be breaking down the steps on a very simple haircut. We're gonna go ahead and give my man Jacob a two on the sides with the ball taper. But most of this video is gonna be real emphasized around his beard. So I'm gonna go ahead and give y'all my tips and tricks on how to fade and shape up the beard. Stay tuned, guys. If you're not already subscribed, please do so and hit that thumbs up button and let's jump right into this video. Alright guys, thank y'all again for tuning in to another tutorial and like I mentioned in the intro, I wasn't playing guys, I want to know some of y'all's goals man. Let's bounce ideas off each other and let's hold each other accountable and let's make the best out of 2022. And as usual, all the steps for this tutorial will be in the description down below in case y'all want to follow along that way. So first of all here guys, I'm spraying a little bit of hairspray just so we can keep those flyaways and those loose hairs out of the way completely. I do not want to clip into them. So here I'm just speeding up the, pro the drying process with my blow dryer. Now with my number two guard that we're completely closed, we're going to go ahead and start cleaning up the sides. Just make sure that you are cutting against the grain guys. So that way you get a consistent cut throughout it all. And it's always handy that you keep a small brush on your opposite hand to then clean the surface and then go over it a few times. As you can see, I'm still using my opposite hand to hold some of those hairs from the top out of the way. Again, I just want to try my best to not clip into them. and then just cleaning up the forehead line as well. And as for every fade guys, we always locate that hairline and base our initial guideline from that. For this taper fade, we're gonna base it off that temple peak area and then come in a diagonal way towards his ear. Starting with no guard, lever completely closed, we're gonna set in our initial first guideline. And yes, my clippers are zero gap, so I will leave a link down in the description for that as well as I highly recommend that you do zero gap your clippers. And I hope that small diagram helped in order to locate the back guideline. It's usually about mid ear. And go ahead and repeat the same process on the opposite side. Now with no guard still, we're gonna open up that lever completely and then set in our second guideline and we're gonna take it up about a finger's width. Just make sure guys that you take your time with these guidelines. You want them as clean as possible. Go over the area as many times as you need to as it is going to be critical when we come back down and start fading away these guidelines. Just be easy on the wrist and make sure that you are flicking out as you approach these, the top of these guidelines. Very simple guys. Now with my number one guard, lever fully open. We're gonna continue that process. And again, all my, all my guidelines are, are about a finger's width. Since I did give them that number two on the sides, as you can see, it's almost blending in, but we're gonna come back in and tighten that up. So by now you should have the first guideline that we created with the zero, second that we created with the lever fully open, and third that we created with the number one guard fully open. We're going to start with that top one and work our way down. Using my one and a half guard, I'm going to close the lever just slightly, putting it into what I like to call a three-fourths position. It's basically somewhere in between fully open and halfway, and we're going to attack that top guideline. Super, super simple steps, guys. And again, guys, this three-fourths, 
I think it, it, it works most of the time just because my clippers are zero gap. So I highly suggest that you zero gap your clippers. But again, it's just a rule of thumb. So if you need to close or open it, then you can and don't be afraid to do so. So now we're going to attack the second guideline coming down using my half guard. And I'm going to keep that lever in that 3 fourths position. As you can see, I'm using mainly the corners of it. And it did create a faint line. Do not take this step any higher as we will come back right now with my one guard and tighten that up. So like I mentioned, now with my number one guard, the lever still in, in that three fourths position. We're gonna attack that faint line that the half guard created. I hope our systematic approach has been helping all of y'all. I think it's very important that you have a systematic approach, guys. If kind of freehanding and going in just a random direction approach for every haircut, especially when you're beginning, is it's gonna be very, very frustrating, guys. So highly suggest that you stick to a systematic approach. And it doesn't have to be ours. You can try as many as you want, just stick to the one that makes the most sense to yours. Now, for the last initial guideline, it's going to be a three-step process, starting with the lever close, and we're going to open it halfway, and then we're going to open it completely. And we're going to take each of those notches up just slightly. Now it's going to be halfway. And it's not until this last guideline that I mainly stick to using only the corners of the clipper just so I basically have that safety net and I don't take my fade up any higher than I need to. As you can see, that left taper is pretty much done. Now as for the backside, again, it's just that three step process, starting with the lever close. Second, halfway. finally fully open and that's pretty much it for the taper guys as for the touch-up work just take a step back and it's important that you also view him from the mirror so you can see any dark spots or areas that you still need to fade and here I'm gonna use my half guard for that touch-up work and I'm gonna put lever play as this last step is gonna vary from client to client and from one side of the head to another so just trust the process guys and stay patient with it more than anything They're just little soft lines that I personally see and want to take out. Now using my trimmer in a forward position to get as close as I can to the scalp and then removing that faint line that it creates by turning it the other way. I like to start removing the beard about mid ear. That usually gives me enough space to fade down. And as you can see by using my trimmer in that forward position I got a lot closer to the scalp and I created a, a faint line between the bottom hair and the fade. And that faint line is basically going to be used as a guideline for my electric shaver. Now I know exactly how high up to take my electric shaver. And the reason I leave my electric shaver to the very end guys, I, I noticed when I first started I used to always do it in the beginning. And more often times than not I usually would end up taking the fade up higher than I wanted to. So that's why now I found a way that works for me and I just use it at the very end. And as you approach that faint line guys, just use the corner of the shaver as again, you don't want to take the fade up any higher than you need to. Now using my cordless trimmers to line up around the ear, you want to try to keep it as natural as possible, but yet as sharp as possible. 
and as for the edge up as usual we start in the middle and then work our way to one side and then to recalibrate I start from the middle again and then approach the left side now snapping off the ends of the razor and of course using my Fata Culture matte razor that you can find at fataculture.co it will be linked down in the description I love these matte razors because again they have that distinction from the blade and the actual razor and I personally like to expose my blade as much as possible the only time I tuck it all the way in is when I'm doing real thick areas like the beard and always using your opposite hand to help stretch the skin to ensure a softer, smoother shave. now using the very fine side of the comb to brush his mustache down and try to clean it up as best as we can and this is where it's, it's important that you do zero gap your trimmers properly as the mustache area is a very very sensitive area and since the mustache is a very tight area to work on you always want to ask your client to pull his lip in and you take the initiative with the opposite hand and stretch that skin even further. Now to fade in the beard, I use a reverse process here. I'm starting with my number one guard, lever completely open, and then I go ahead and close it completely, and then using that three-step process in reverse. So I'm starting with the lever fully open, then I close it halfway, and then we close it completely. And then using my trimmers to finish off that fade. Very, very simple way, guys. Here, rubbing a little bit of uh, shave gel. And a tip that I do have for that shave gel, guys, is after you apply it, go ahead and apply a little bit of water on top of that just to elongate the life of the shave gel. And as for the neckline guys, I always like to go off the Adam's apple. I go about a finger's width up from the Adam's apple. Again, the neckline is a highly sensitive area. So make sure that you are zero capping your trimmers as properly as you can. And then going over the area with my electric shaver. I personally prefer to use the electric shaver on the neckline. Here, adding a little bit of water to his beard so I can then blow dry it and start fluffing it out here I'm using medium heat on high speed and as you can see I'm brushing out in towards that blow dryer this is just gonna give me the most volume on the beard and now using a little bit of spritz which is just basically a hairspray to then freeze the beard in the outwards direction and you always want to hit it with a cool shot to close those cuticles and lock that hair in place. And here this is where it's important that you have white walls in your barbershop so you have that contrast. Or you can use a napkin like I'm doing here for those bottom hairs. You need that contrast guys so you can see exactly what you're doing. And here I'm just freehanding the beard, freehanding all the flyaways and from the bottom I'm giving it a better shape. As you can see that napkin really helps against the black capes. Here applying a little bit of hair enhancement and yes we do dilute ours with a little bit of water. Again the link will be in the description to all our products guys. So here's the before guys in case y'all forgot. And here's the after. Two on the sides with a bald taper. 
I hope y'all enjoyed this tutorial, guys. I hope y'all learned a tip or two, especially on the beard. As always, guys, let us know what y'all would like for us to do next on this channel. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already. And I'll see y'all in the next one, guys. Peace.